My name is Muriel Maffre. I'm a former principal dancer with the San Francisco Ballet. I'm teaching at Stanford University and I am also a graduate student in museum studies. Yeah, before coming to San Francisco, I, um, I was a uh, premier dancer at the Monte Carlo Ballet uh, for five years. Uh, but I started my career as an apprentice in Germany at the Hamburg Ballet. Uh, with John Mayer, um, and I was there for a year. And following uh, that year, I, I spent a, a year just freelancing and uh, entering competitions, um, and kind of pushing the, the the workload and the experience so that I could, you know, move out of the core and start doing a solo career. Um, and we faced the same thing because of the height; it was obvious that I couldn't fit in, into a course. I knew two French dancers that were uh, in the company Jean-Charles Gilles and Karina Verti. And um, I spoke to Jean-Charles, I got in touch with Jean-Charles somehow, and um, he mentioned that the company was coming on tour to Paris, and uh, I was able to, to go um, to visit them in Paris, and he arranged for uh, me and, and a dancer that I was dating at the time to take class with the company, and that's how the whole um, dialogue started with that company. Um, and um, met with Helgi, and, um, and after that, it happened on the phone. I <laughs> mean, the whole conversation continued on the phone. Um, and yeah, it took a few months, you know, for them to find a contract. And... I was really excited to change environment. Um, I had, you know, I did all my training in France and, and although I started working in Germany, I was, um, you know, very involved in the ballet world in France and, and knew who was who and, and who had the power and who had the, you know, the position. And, and you get really um, stifled by, you know, I got really stifled by the environment and I wanted to confront myself in a, with another mentality and surround myself with different kinds of dancers. And um, I thought coming to America would expose me to, to that. And uh, when I arrived to the San Francisco Ballet, um, I was very lucky because they already had in their repertory things that I had danced in Europe, um, namely uh, In the Middle Somewhat Elevated, the Forsyth piece. So two weeks after joining the company, I was able to go on stage and perform, and, um, and that really allowed me to integrate the company really fast. Um, but I was very... Um, I, d I didn't feel like I was fitting it really well because dancers were very different. The, their approach to ballet was very different. Mine was very introverted, um, not, not introvert, introspective. Um, and theirs were very heroic and um, you know, outgoing. And, and I was very attracted by that because it's something I didn't have. You know? And, and uh, I wanted to learn how to become that kind of dancer. Yeah, there is something about the American spirit that is very uh, outgoing and explosive and heroic and uh, that is very particular to uh, the style here. Yeah. Um, more, more, more strength, more uh, vitality, more uh, speed. You know, I don't want to say speed because everybody associates American style with speed, but... Uh, that's why I like better using the word heroic. Well, my personal history is one thing, and then the environment is something else. I think there is a mentality in Europe that, is, that comes from the fact that, um, you know, the art is government funded, less now, but still, uh, you can say that it's, it's for the most part government funded. So, um, on the one side, dancers have that kind of security, 
Um, but on the other side, you do find in Europe an excitement about creation, about making art, and, and uh, a quality and, and a curiosity and a sense of adventure that is much more present in Europe than in America, because in America you cannot take that kind of risk, because there's a different reality. Uh, my personal history had to do with my relationship with the Paris Opera in that story that affected me very, you know, very deeply and I just felt that I needed to, to really um, break, you know, create a break, yeah. Well, I entered the Paris Opera, I was t 10 years old, I stayed there through 15, so I did all the, um, I graduated, I did through the whole, I went through the whole curriculum. Um, and. You know, as a dancer, I was not fitting in. I was way, I was out of that. I was not fitting in the mall. I was too tall. Um, I um, I grew fast very late, so I, I was really behind all the girls with my technique. And um, and then my personality was. I, I was raised to really stand for what I was believing and and um, and to be very independent-minded. And that didn't quite. Fit in you know um, in that environment. So I left the school and I was just very sad and not um, uh, not open and 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 happy and um, blooming <laughs> as a teenager, you know. Um, and that, you know, and then when you, are, you, you know, there is a, you're stigmatized, you know, when, when you don't make it to the company, it means that you're kind of fired from the school and you're stigmatized. And I just felt really bad, you know, as a young dancer. So, I mean, in Monte Carlo, I had my moment and, you know, already when I came back from Germany, I entered the, the ballet competition in Paris and I won the gold medal and so thing, Things changed eventually, but um, there was a point where I felt I needed something really new to be able to go forward, and that, that's where the motivation was. Is um, I felt I was just going to do, you know, stay in one spot. When I came to America, I looked up to Evelyn and all those people that had these powers, amazing strengths and power, and. Evelyn, Joanna, Kitita, you know, all those, and I was like, well, how can I be like them, you know? And I went that path until I fell on my nose, and, I, and I, I would watch films of myself, and I would be completely appalled, you know, and I, re I realized that that was not the right way to do it. <laughs> I was not um, developing myself and using what I had. You know, I was going, going against it. So I had to have backtracked, and you know, but you, um, that's where, that's where uh, you know, keeping your feet on the ground and having that, always that introspective look and, and power to analyze and really be fair to yourself. But it is a struggle because to, to, to enter a company, you have to, somehow you have to fit in, you know, and a lot of people enter companies, you know, from the lower ranks, so. Uh, you have to fit in somehow, in, even if you're not different. Uh, but it's more showing a flexibility, a way, uh, an adaptability, a quality of being able to adapt. I mean, I was very interested in using the ballet technique because I, I completely fell in love with that, uh, the partic particularity of the technique and. Um, and how much of the body it uses. And uh, so I went in that direction and that what, why I went after ballet companies. Um, and also because I knew as far as my style, I was not an athletic dancer. I was a dancer that was much more refined and elegant, which really fit into that vernacular. Now I might, because now I, ha I have refined my aesthetic and what I really like, I might have gone a completely different way. And I, although I love ballet and I love teaching ballet and as a, as a language, as far as the performance art, I have a real problem in appreciating it as a performance art. Watching yeah, the perfect. Yeah, what? I find it really kitsch and irrelevant. Not the technique, but the way it's used. 
pure classical ballet, I mean, the pure classical ballet, I almost accept it better because it's a period, it represents a certain period um, when it's done well. And the costuming, everything fits within a period, but, but otherwise, everything that was done, you know, in be, I don't know, lately, I would say, yeah. very few people succeeded in, in using the language and kind of adapting it. And, and, but there's a whole culture and a whole look with ballet that I really have a hard time with, starting with men wearing tights to women wearing eyelashes, you know. And so I'm, tr I'm trying to find a way to reconcile all that because it's my history, right. you know. You know, I, I'm, f I'm come to realize that I'm full of contradiction. <laughs> and uh, there is something that I love about ballet and also I, as, I love performing myself, right? And I had made this contract with myself, is that whatever you're given, you know, just embrace it and do the best, the most you can with, you know, with your, your own sensibility and, and your own tools and your own skills so that you can be fulfilled. There was no point for me you know, if I was going to stay there to criticize and not be happy with what I was given. So I did fell in love with all the roles that I had give, been given um, because, yeah, I was so invested that I didn't bring in this critical look that I have now uh, because I'm detached now and it's almost my role now, not being part of it, that I can, I can bring that critical perspective out.